Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We are continuing our efforts to keep you all in prayer and to stay united through these messages of hope during these devastating times. The news that we hear from the media is not good news at all, and it can have a very intense dampening effect on our spirit. The news is very true indeed. There is no question about that. The number of identified cases increases every day and with it the number of deaths. That is very stark news and we are forced, like it or not, to deal with the reality. This is an enormous shock to our systems. We have never in our lifetime had to deal with such realities. In fact, we find ourselves in a position where we just can't deal with it. Nothing in our lives has ever prepared us for such an experience and we can so easily fall into an unhealthy reactive state. We can so easily fall into a state of desp despondency and depression. And that is why we are presenting these thoughts and reflections at this time to try and build up and support our flailing spirits. These are very difficult times and they bring great fear and worry into our lives. We begin to wonder about it all. Is this the end? Who's going to be next? Is it me? Is it one of my family members, one of my neighbors? And so in these times, it is extremely important that we try to speak the truth, speak to our faith, to our trust, to our belief in him. Truly, this is a genuine Lenten theme. However, during normal circumstances of life, we stay so busy and engaged in our own affairs and business that we may give only a passing or cursory glance to the Lenten season. We are now face to face with some stark realities. We are not in control, as Rodney likes to say regularly around the office. He is in control. We are challenged to surrender control to him today because we cannot navigate this very well on our own. And so let us turn to him this evening in prayer. God, loving and all-powerful Father, hear our fervent prayers which we bring to you this evening. We are fearful. We are terrified. We ask you to do something. Please do something big and great and powerful. Please bring a speedy end to this coronavirus. Lord, we feel like the disciples who were in the boat with you when the squall suddenly blew up. Are you listening? Do you care? This evening, on the Feast of the Annunciation, I should like to reflect on the idea of being a messenger. Today we read in the daily readings for the feast day, and they were very powerful. In the Gospel, we have the recounting of the angel appearing to Mary. Here is the description. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. This is a pretty powerful experience and certainly a significant teaching for us in these days. The passage says, Mary was greatly troubled, and today we certainly know that experience. We're all troubled by the current circumstances, but the really large and looming question is, what is the message saying to us? and What message are we providing to each other? 
Is it reasonable to ask ourselves, are we prophets of doom or prophets of hope? The message to Mary was that you will conceive and bear in your womb a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Through this period of fear and doubt in our lives, we have the possibility of conceiving Jesus also and bringing him forth into our world. And so my question is, are we going to be uh, prophets of good news or messengers of fear? The choice is ours. Thankfully, Mary becomes the ultimate example for all of us humans in breaking through her fear, not knowing what was ahead, but trusting that he would provide first reading of today's Mass provides an interesting story as well. It says, The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. This is certainly an experience that is not uncommon to us. We often ask the Lord for signs, but we are terrified to hear his answer because perhaps we are afraid of what it will really ask of us in our lives. Tonight I invite you to really address the fears that tend to take hold of you and like Mary, to ask the Lord to give you the faith that he will guide us through these very difficult times and that he will provide for us the healing remedy let us now entrust ourselves to him. Lord, we ask you to hear our fervent prayer as we gather in your name. We are fearful and worried and anxious. Give us that peace that you gave to Mary following the announcement of the messenger so that she could manage her fear. Help us to manage our fear and our worry and our anxiety and help us to cast our cares upon you to trust you and to believe in you, that you will guide us safely through this great ordeal. We ask you to bless those who are choosing not to be compliant. Make them compliant so that we bring an end to this virus and that we be renewed powerfully and wonderfully in you through Christ our Lord.